Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Stellar Lumens, aka XLM. So with that being said, let's just dive in and let's start off with the overall price chart. So it's been a little bit of time since we've talked about XLM. I think the last time that we talked about it was in the live stream when XRP did get cleared as a currency, uh, which I do think that XLM could really kind of backpedal off of because XLM is a fork of XRP originally. I know today it's a little bit of a different story, but it originally was, which is also why I've always said like the price action is so eerily like similar to each other. Like here's the XRP chart. Here's the XLM chart. Very, very similar charts. Um, but nonetheless, XLM did have a great run up off of those lows as well. Uh, if you guys were following the Patreon, then hey, you bagged some really great profits on this thing. It's about roughly a 160% run up. And uh, now we are below, of course, the weekly 200 EMA at about 15 and almost a half cents. Really want to um, have a breakout above that to uh, continue this major run up. Uh, so far, the overall price action here is very, very similar back to November of 2020, which is also why I told the Patreon, like we really need to be accumulating this zone because we will eventually have a breakout of this yellow breaker point, which if we go all the way back in time, we tried back in August of 2020, we ended up selling off, accumulating. Then, of course, we went to the breaker yet again, slightly retested it then we broke down a little bit and then we finally got the breakout which started the 2021 bull run for xlm that almost broke its all-time high this time around because i said that xlm did get suppressed the same way that xrp did get suppressed because they do follow each other very very similarly so if we actually look back at this you know i think that this major run-up next could very well be the all-time high being broken out on uh, XLM. And the reason why is because we are expecting new all-time highs on XRP because there's nothing holding XRP back. We're starting to see a lot more expansion happening on Ripple side, especially for on-demand liquidity corridors. Combine that with retail use, retail adoption, then also even more expansions happening on the XRP ledger side of things. You know, it could be a recipe for an incredible growth rate. And also, you know, crypto looks pretty good as well uh, this year for a major run-up in the market. Now, of course, does that mean that we should prepare for all-time highs? Uh, I think that we should always be prepared for new all-time highs because it's been well over 2,044 days since that all-time high was broken back in 2017 and 2018. So I think that XL, XLM and even XRP are both destined for a new all-time high, and I think that they have been suppressed for so long and they've been brewing for so long with, of course, adoption being built out, use cases being built out, and uh, expansions happening. So to me personally, you know, if we do tap this green zone, it's going to be a huge buy zone yet again for XLM. And uh, just like I've said many times in the past, like, you know, don't take these opportunities for granted. You got to make sure that you jump on them when they do happen because they don't last too long. And they are huge, especially for a lot of these utility tokens like XLM um, that I do. You know, like I said, I, I look at these as future giants, especially around the payments landscape with the P2P sector and even the B2B sector, which XRP, like I said, is more so catering to. Now, obviously, you know, with that in mind, what's going to be the catalyst for XLM to really start to leap forward? Well, this article here got written back in July. It was July 21st. And what do you see Stellar in quarter two focus on utility takes center stage as XLM leaps forward. Like its underlying network, XLM's performance in the last seven days has been impressive. However, the price may have hit a local top. And uh, yeah, I mean, it really has. I mean, this was this was basically the topping point. And simply to really put this simply, it's the fact that it was trying to flip the summer lows of 2021. We couldn't really do that. So the support acted as resistance. Um, so we are probably going to have to test that a few times to weaken it to actually finally get the breakout above it. Uh, very similar to what we've seen back here in uh, January of 2021. Now, of course, like I said, you know, with this huge announcement, this is with uh, I think this is Sorbonne that they're talking about within this article. Um, but we do see, according to this report, Stellar highlighted how the Anchor platform has been adopted by several projects. During the quarter, Stellar announced that the Anchor network through the SEP24 enables off and on ramps services while improving the process of wallet connection. The report noted that this makes it easier for projects to build on Stellar while decreasing development time and cost. And um, a lot of people have been looking at this idea that they're utilizing Circle and USDC. For example, like besides SCP 
uh, 24, the Anchor Network Stellar also provided its infrastructure for Circle USDC. One of the biggest argument points is that, you know, Stellar doesn't use XLM. All they use is USDC. And I want to speculate for a second. So do you guys remember the drama around the Ripple liquidity hub not using XRP? Do you remember why they weren't using XRP? It was because of the regulatory uncertainty. We do see here XRP will be evaluated along with other tokens for support within the product. We look forward to supporting XRP as it receives regulatory clarity in the US. And I think this is why Stellar hasn't utilized XLM more you know, openly. Uh, simply because I think that they were scared of regulatory action taken against them. Uh, so I do think that now it kind of opens the door for XLM to be utilized more efficiently on the network um, outside of just fees for wallets and you know transactions. I would love to see a lot more adoption of XLM. And maybe that's what's going to happen with these smart contracts that are coming. Because outside of this scope, we also do have smart contracts coming for the network, which is through Sorobon. What do you see over here? Wrapping up the first half of 2023 with a bang. SDF delivered on our roadmap. Utility is the growth exponent. From Sorbon to our FTIDA collaboration, we're brimming the pride. Let's explore. So check this out. This is a video. It's about a minute 33. Really kind of just explaining how big this could very well be for Stellar. One of the most interesting things to me actually about uh, Sorbon development thus far is the fact that it's all been done in the open. So 10 preview releases, definitely unheard of. Since we started last year, ecosystem devs, they've been encouraged to tinker and build. They've been invited to join development and design discussions. And all of that has been happening in public on the Stellar Dev Discord. Um, there have been so many ideas, so many contributions, so much feedback coming in from so many different voices. And even though that, that level of democratic access is kind of inherently messy, um, it's been a really wonderful thing to watch. And the result is much, much better. And it came way, way faster than it would have if SDF engineers had tried to build something like this in a silo. It takes a village, people. Speaking of a village. Um, because Sorbonne has been built in the open and because ecosystem devs have been hacking away throughout all 10 preview releases, we've actually seen something pretty remarkable happen. A viable ecosystem of smart contracts projects has been built alongside the platform itself. So at this moment, there are over 70 projects building on Sorbonne that I personally know about, and there are likely many more that I don't, which means that come being at launch, we can expect a thriving ecosystem. So if you are a developer, you don't need to wait for building blocks. They're here right now, ready for you. Now, there's still a chance to be a part of that first wave of developers. You'll be in good company and well equipped to succeed if you join, but blink and you're gonna miss it. You will be a second waiver, a new waiver if you don't start now. Are you interested? Do you wanna know more? Check out sorabon.stellar.org. So yeah, I do think that Sorbonne is going to really be the key that opens the door for a lot of adoption to happen on the Stellar network. Um, and I also think that this is going to unlock a lot more utility for XLM as a token, uh, which, again, I'm very hopeful for because right now there has always been a big discussion around where is XLM even being utilized? Again, it's really just for accounts, fees, uh, and a few things that are on the network right now. Um, but like I said, I think that very similar to XRP, I think that Stellar has kind of avoided utilizing the token so much because, you know, they were kind of afraid of the SEC. But I do think that the recent dis discussions and decisions around the XRP case really kind of opened the door for XLM to be utilized more properly, like I said. Um, but also in terms of Sorbonne, so we do see a new smart contract standard. And within this, you know, what we are going to see is a lot more adoption of the network through scalable use cases. And also it's going to open the door for a lot more developers to utilize the network and, you know, build on it, especially in terms of like high quality um, projects, which again is a huge huge major major step in the right direction and um, if we scroll down here they do mention a few things around it uh, they're already going to have a lot of support especially around like rust uh, they also have the Sorbonne virtual machine which is written in rust for contracts developed in rust so it's really going to tap into the you know, safe and efficient tools that are already available in the rust ecosystem really kind of welcoming in all those developers and then also it builds on WebAssembly or WASM so you can build SDKs in your favorite WASM compatible language so this is great for developers of all you know experiences if you will and then also scalability so like I said scalable use cases are going to be the key to maximize utility on the network and I think that as we look at Sorbonne it's really kind of built for this so I'm very excited for that and I'm very excited for you know the use cases that could really thrive from this and then also down here, 
we do see reliable access to financial rails. So lastly, Sorbonne is designed for reliable access to financial rails via the Stellar network. We're incorporating Sorbonne into the existing Stellar tech stack and ecosystem. That means we could harness the best of what Stellar has to offer, a proven reliable network that has been live since 2015. As we speak, Stellar is closing ledgers in a timely manner with five seconds to finality on average, and Stellar is also processing about 150 transactions per second. This is a weekly average of real TPS, not theoretical marketing hype. So this is great to see. And again, like they're already testing Sorbon, So uh, we're really kind of looking forward to this thing launching because once this does launch, I think that's going to be very, very in interesting to see what happens from here on out, uh, or I should say from there on out, uh, especially around development, new use cases, things like that. And then also, I do want to go over um, one last thing, and that is this tweet here from Danelle Dixon. She's talking about FedNow. So FedNow's launch has received a lot of attention, especially from our industry. Is this the Fed's crypto killer, the beginning of a pathway towards a US CBDC? Are we all doomed? No, I think this is a net positive development for the industry, which I've talked about as well. And then she does talk about on and off ramps. We talk about it a lot at Stellar, but on and off ramps are a key to real world utility. It doesn't matter how fast we can send our, sorry, how fast we can send or receive our money on the blockchain if it still takes three to five days to access your funds. By improving the last mile delivery of money in the US, we might be witnessing the dawn of a new era in payments that plays to the strengths of both blockchain and institutions, whether they realize it or not. And I do think, you know, like I've said it in the past as well around XRP. You know, I said that this is a significant change, especially around the infrastructure and the scenery for payments. And I do think that it opens the door for a lot of things to really kind of start to go live and uh, real time payments, instant payments to really become a reality around instant settlement. So I think that this is very great uh, to see, especially around like the retail sector, um, because I do think that the P2P sector is going to be the first ones to really kind of see it. Institutions, they come later after regulations are finally in 100%. Uh, so we still have to be a little bit more patient, but it is very exciting. And also remember from the recent report with the Block Pro quantifying cash to crypto access worldwide June 2023, we do see under the executive summary, two blockchain networks, uh, Bitcoin and Stellar are supported by the greatest number of cash on and off ramps, respectfully. Uh, the gap between these two networks and those that trail them is significant. The number of on ramps that support access to Bitcoin is 240% greater than the second most supported asset. Similarly, the number of off ramps that support usdc on stellar is around 230 uh, percent greater uh than the second most supported asset and then they just kind of talk about how um they're not evenly distributed globally in terms of the number of on and off ramps but then last but not least they do say moneygram is the single largest provider of on and off ramps with over 300,000 agent locations offering blockchain access worldwide. According to our estimates, MoneyGram also has a higher share of ramp locations across different geographies with a smaller con uh, concentration in North America relative to the other providers. The primary asset that MoneyGram supports is USDC on Stellar. The latter thus benefits from MoneyGram's extensive network of off ramps or cash uh, ramps. You know, I do look at this I wonder if at some point in time MoneyGram is going to pioneer XLM. I think that that would be great. Um, in terms of like XLM, I do think that the utility is there. I just think that it's not being utilized at major scale. Again, I even say the same thing about XRP though. Uh, we still have some time until mass scale actually happens. But if we do scroll down, you know, even if you're talking about XLM, XLM does have access to 46,647 on ramps. And then also in terms of off ramps, we do see that XLM still does have a significant access point to 26,221 off ramps. So there's a significant amount uh, there. But I do think that with everything that we have been seeing around standardization regulation and even like the infrastructure being laid out with FedNow, I think that all of this is really kind of just you know, becoming a big thing uh, to really kind of welcome in the next major innovation. I've always said like, we need this stuff to accommodate for the next wave. Um, and the next wave is integration of these digital assets and, you know, even digital networks uh, in order to facilitate faster payments and incorporate faster settlements and really kind of welcome in the world of Web3 and the Internet of Value. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. I just hope that you all have a beautiful day or beautiful night wherever you guys are on this. Beautiful. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.